Behind me is Europol. I think you can just about see the building. The former prosecutor joining hands with EU crime fighters. That's what Labour wanted to hit you with today. We have to smash those gangs. Keir Starmer would use laws usually deployed against terrorists, against the criminal gangs that run the small boats operations. The reason that the operations here work so well is because they deal with terrorist cases. I think we need to put this vile trade, you know, putting people into boats, in the same sort of category so that it's dealt with as seriously. It's not clear how much effect anti-terrorist measures like freezing bank accounts would have for gangs that are largely outside the UK. But in newspapers like The Sun, Keir Starmer got the sort of headlines he was looking for. Other papers, though, focused on an element of Labour policy the party wasn't particularly pushing. Its interest in joining in the EU arrangement that allows EU member states to send some illegal migrants back to the country within the EU that they first arrived in. But if an EU country sends, say, migrants back to Italy or Greece, it has to accept a certain quota of migrants from the EU total. The Daily Mail said that amounted to an open-door policy. It said about 120,000 extra migrants could arrive in the UK under this system. Rishi Sunak piled in behind them. I don't think it's credible that he really wants to grip this problem, and his plans today seem to amount to saying that we might one day accept 100,000 EU migrants every year. Uh, that doesn't seem like a credible plan to me. It's embarrassing that the government is pumping out this nonsense. I can only assume it's because they've got nothing sensible to say on the issue. EU sources confirm that if the UK were to join EU arrangements on migrants, it would not just be a case of returning people it didn't want here. It would have to sign up to obligations to help with funds for migrants and potentially take some migrants through an EU quota system. It probably won't be the exact same agreement as the one in Turner for EU, but it can not only take into account returns, but not apply other parts that are consistent. But right now, the EU's own burden-sharing scheme is not fully functioning. Illegal migration across the Mediterranean into Italy is up 100% so far this year. Germany's just refused to take any more migrants from Italy. Their Deputy Prime Minister today said it was the death of Europe and Italy had been left all alone. Number 10 briefed last month that it was interested in a returns agreement with the EU, but today government sources insisted they wouldn't compromise to get one. A hard line, it hopes, will win over swing voters in marginals who put migration high up their concerns. Small boats in particular is, you know, is a very, very important issue. This, ca this calendar year I've put out over 300,000 leaflets and surveys to uh, local people and the top issue that I've got back from the surveys is small boats and tackling that. Today was an early encounter in the election battle. A hard line on criminal gangs unveiled by Keir Starmer, while Rishi Sunak continues to push for the power to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda. Gary Given there. Well, earlier I spoke to the Shadow Attorney General, Emily Thornberry, and I began by asking why a returns deal with the EU is so crucial to putting a stop to people smuggling. We need to have a deal with the EU. We absolutely have to crush these criminal gangs. And the deal with the EU is many different things. One of the things is to work with Europol to share information, to be able to have joint investigations and to be able to really go for these monsters who are pushing inflatable dinghies off the coast of France. We have to stop this despicable crime. We also then need to have a policy whereby we can have some safe and legal routes for people to be able to get here. I don't recall seeing a lot about safe and legal routes in uh, Sikir Starmer's press release this morning. So that's part of the plan, is it? How many more asylum seekers would a Labour government take from around the world? So I can't give you today the details of what the agreement would be with the European Union. What I can tell you is that Not we with the European Union, sorry. That we're talking about safe and legal routes. Say somebody now caught up in the horrible situation in Libya. Would there be a safe and legal route open to them? Because at present, there isn't, is there? Yeah. So the negotiations would, take, would encompass people coming from you know, their original home or if they have got as far as Europe, we need to be able to have a negotiation with the European Union whereby we, we, we set out all of these details so that we all work together. If such a crucial part of Keir Starmer's plan is a returns agreement with the European Union, 
What happens if they don't agree to one? If they say no, your plan is kaput. <laughs> what we have been doing today is we have gone to Europe, we have gone to see Europol, and we have been talking to them about the sharing of information, about working together with them, about having joint investigations in order to be able to crush the gangs. That is number one. Kier is going to be speaking to a number of people. He's going to be speaking to some people in France in the near future. We will also be talking about having being able to work with the European Union when it comes to dealing with the small boats, as well as crushing the gangs. We need to be able to have safe and legal routes for people to be able to come into the country, but we also need to have a returns agreement with the European Union for people who are taking the mickey. I see. So, so what's in it for the EU to have a returns agreement with the UK? What we will be doing is we will be having an agreement that covers a number of different issues, and that will include the intelligence and information that we are able to share with the European Union that we don't at the moment because we're outside the European Union. If we return <laughs> asylum seekers to the EU, they would expect that they can return asylum seekers to us as well, surely. That's part, that would be any part of any quid pro quo, right? We take a quota. So there are a number of measures that need to be brought in, and I cannot today, amongst the measures, tell you, you know, how many people we might return, how many people we might accept. You know, it will be part of a negotiation. But what I can tell you and tell the viewers is that there will be a reset with our relationship with the European Union, and we will be able to come to a proper grown-up deal. And frankly, at the moment, we really need that. Would there be a quota then that we would have to accept from the EU of asylum seekers that they would like to return to us? And would that be higher or lower than the number that would move in the opposite direction? Since Suella Bravman became Home Secretary, 40,000 people have come into the UK on small boats. It is total chaos at the moment. They have no idea what to do. And we have a plan. And that plan is, as I've been setting out, to crush the gangs in the way that I have been saying, and that is the most important thing that we do, to come to an agreement with the European Union when it comes to safe and legal routes of people claiming asylum and wanting to come over to the UK and them accepting people um, returns. I mean, obviously, there's one, for example, at the moment with Albania. You know, that we, can, we can come to an agreement if we approach it in good faith. Emily Thorne, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for speaking to us. That's all right.